Hi, everyone, and welcome aboard on our journey through the world of science. My name is Chris Sarsky. I'm one of the consultants with the CART Consortia, and I'm going to have my partner introduce himself as well. Hi, everyone. My name is Ted Zeroni, and I'm uh, working with the ERLC, the Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium. And I'll tell you, Ted is an incredible person to work with. So uh, <laughs> you are in for a treat to have him on board, I can tell you that. So welcome aboard. We are going to just uh, take you through an introduction to some of the documents and some of the things that we would like to highlight before we actually launch into specific units, concepts, things like that, that we're going to be unpacking with you throughout the year for science. So um, this is a, a session that all of you, regardless for what grade you're in, K to six, will have this in your folder. And you should be watching this before you come to your second session, whatever date that is going to be. So to begin our session, then I'm going to just start with a land acknowledgement. Given that we are coming to you from Treaty 6, but many of you across the province are coming either from six Treaties 6, 7 or 8. So we've tried to word our acknowledgement in such a way that we encompass all of you and we recognize all the lands that you are on. So in the spirit of reconciliation, we want to acknowledge that this gathering is taking place on traditional lands across the province of Alberta, home to many diverse Indigenous, Métis and Inuit peoples. We acknowledge that this land is a traditional meeting ground, giving voice to its original peoples and the story of creation of this country in a way that history has forgotten. Um, as Chris mentioned, we are going to be together for a while. This is the first of, of the many sessions that we hope to be with you. And, and at the end of the time, we hope that we will meet these success criteria. Number one, that after your time with us, you do feel confident in navigating the new curriculum and all the associated resources and, and um, other items that come along with the curriculum. We hope that you have come away with a sense of direction. Uh, and a good strong sense of moving forward with implementing the new curriculum and that you have a sense of self-efficacy so that when you move ahead and choose the resources and the implementation work you go ahead feeling that you can do this that you got this and if and you, you can walk away with those three things we'll know that we've been successful and you'll have it believe me we're gonna just learn together like we're not perfect and we're gonna try and help support but but we're gonna learn it together And as far as norms, we're, we're going to introduce norms to you um, for the sessions. Uh, you may actually see different things on your registration forms from now on. But one of the things that we really wanted to um, just highlight to you that we are coming to you virtually. And we know that there's a comfort level in having it virtual. We know that there's a cost saving measure for sure in time and travel. But for that, we also would like a little bit of a trade off in the sense that we would really like you to be present with, with us when you're here. And that would mean also, can you turn your camera on so that we're not talking to a little black box? We know that there are exceptions to the rule. We know that sometimes technology falls apart and totally understand that. But for the most part, we would love it if you could be part of the session with us. You don't have to provide us information, but just be engaged with us, um, you know, especially if we've got some some questions or dialogues that we want to engage in. Um, but also want to just point out being a, a registered participant. And I'm bringing that forward because we're having some some situations where we have one person in a school registered and we might have a whole staff meeting following along and these aren't costing you anything. The consortia are funded based on the number of people that are in attendance at their sessions. So for us, it's important to know, first of all, who we're talking to. It's kind of nice to know who the clientele is, but also that we have everyone accounted for. So if you can join us in those norms, we would greatly appreciate it. Uh, in this introductory session, we plan to take you through a few things. First of all, we will not want to walk through how the curriculum is built. Uh, this may be already something that many of you are familiar with, but there are many of you who may be not too familiar with it. So we think it's a good starting point to just walk everyone through again uh, how the curriculum itself is organized and built. Um, included with that are not only the curriculum documents, but there are some progressions. Uh, there are the competencies, the literacy, and, and the numeracy progressions, which are uh, tell us, um, give us some direction of which competencies to pick, whether it's creative, critical thinking or collaboration. 
uh, and so on um, with each grade level, as well with the literacy and numeracy progressions, progressions. Those are honed down to, to age or grade levels so that uh, they are more age and grade appropriate when you work through the curriculum and plan to include them uh, with your learning activities. We'll then take a quick look at the New Learn Alberta site to familiarize yourself with that. And you can find where, and we'll show you where all those resources are located. And then we're gonna pause and take a look at uh, concepts and look at the curriculum guide through that conceptual end of concepts to help us understand what they are a little bit more and where they're located. Uh, and then we'll introduce you to a curriculum exploration document, which you won't have to do. We'll share a little bit with you and then how you can get hold of that later um, to get your feet wet in opening up the curriculum and, uh, and giving it a, a good glance over so you can get a sense of what's inside it. And then we'll take a look at our next steps as we move ahead uh, into the next sessions beyond this one. Uh, to begin with, the structure of new curriculum is built from a very broad general idea to more specific ideas and understandings. If we go to the next slide, we'll know that the big general ideas are called those organizings, organizing ideas. And you'll see those words such as space or, or matter or energy, and those are the organizing ideas. Those are very broad subject area or ideas that span the different, um, different grades. And to get more specific and to hone down a little bit at the study of that organizing idea, there are some guiding questions and a related outcome that's directly connected to that guiding question. And even more specific than are that acronym, the CUSPs, uh, they are the knowledge, the understanding and skills and processes. So those are the more specific ideas and concepts related to the, the learning outcome and again to the larger organizing idea. So when we look at a copy of your sort of cover page to your curriculum document, you'll have um, a number of different shaded lines. And you notice that they are a little bit in a different tone and they all have an, a different meaning. So the very darkest one always indicates to you that you have an organizing idea. And an organizing idea has now in science replaced the word topic. So you no longer have topic A, topic B, you now have an organizing idea and I'll know which organizing idea I'm looking at just by looking at the word right behind it. In this case, it tells me I'm talking about matter. It might be energy, it might be living system. So always look to see what's behind there. And that is, a, as, as Ted already mentioned, it's a broad statement that covers several grades. And, and basically it's giving you sort of the big rocks, the big concepts are sitting inside that. And that's where we want to kind of hone our skills right at the beginning to find those concepts, because that's going to help inform how we drill down into the specificity of our particular grade. So those organizing ideas do, in a lot of cases, span all the grades from K to six. There are a few that you see don't start right away for kindergarten, and then definitely space does not start until grade four, which used to be just grade six. So now we're taking that topic and expanding it over three. So you see that organizing ideas, these are your organizing ideas. Those are the big concepts that we're gonna unpack as we go out throughout this, this uh, session that we're gonna be doing. And we're gonna look at how those relate to the specific topic or uh, specific um, concepts that you have to unpack in your um, curriculum. So one of the documents, one of your first key documents, and for those of you who've been through this before, just bear with us for a moment. Um, one of your key documents to start with is what we call the numbered outcomes document for science. And this is exactly the same document that the government put out. Only the difference is, is that we have numbered each of the outcomes. Just to make it easy for reference, if you're starting to do some webbing and some planning, you might just wanna use the numbering system instead of writing the whole thing out each time. If you're working in a PLC, having a conversation, it makes it easier to have a reference point rather than trying to thumb through how many pages you have to go down, find that line that you're on and whatever. So how they were numbered follows the same type of numbering system, whether you are in kindergarten or in grade six. So we're looking at a kindergarten one right now. So the very first one tells you what grade you are in. The next one represents the organizing idea, in this case, matter. The following sets of numbers may or may not appear as doubles. So the first number tells me which outcome I'm talking about in matter 
as opposed to in the in this document. This document is a fixed document. It's not going to change its order overnight, so it stays fixed. So it's okay for me to number this because I know that that's a fixed place. So here I see 1M1.1. So this is grade one matter, first outcome. If it has a decimal behind it, you will see that there's more than one row of knowledge, understanding, skills, and processes. In actual fact, many of them have several rows, sometimes seven or eight rows of, of these documents. So let me just bring one up for you. Today would be nice. It's a big document. It's about 80 pages long. So when you get this, don't print the whole thing, just print your grades. You don't have to go for the whole thing. All right, so let me just show you what I'm talking about. So here I see my organizing idea. I have it numbered, and I'm gonna talk about these specifically in just a moment. But here's the very first outcome for grade one, and it says 0.1, which means that it has a row of knowledge, understanding, skills, and processes. The outcome never changes its wording, regardless of what page I'm on for that matter. So here I see the same outcome showing up again. It says 0.2 because this is a whole new row of knowledge, understanding, skills, and processes. And if I keep going, I find that I have yet another row, so 0.3, and yet nothing here. So it stopped on the third one, whereas if you look over here in grade, four, in grade two, it continued. It had a 1.4 it had a 1.5 and so on. So it varies depending on, but the numbering system is consistent throughout, that won't change. And we'll talk a little bit more about that document in, in a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna go back one here. So when I look at the guiding question, that's your second row of color that you see here. That guiding question was designed for the teacher to give you a prompt to think of how might I answer that question given the outcome I'm needing to teach? How am I going to use some of the ideas that are framed in that question to link it to the concepts I saw in the organizing idea and to unpack the learner outcome? So it's directly a, a prompt, really. It's not an I can statement to put on the board for the students. It was designed for us as teachers to really think about how am I gonna unpack this and what are some key pieces that I have to make sure that I'm addressing as I go on. So it often will identify more than one concept in there. It, it gives me some specificity that I'm looking for. The learner outcome, as you see, the learner outcomes are broad statements. They tell us what the student needs to know, understand, and be able to do. That's nothing new to us. We've seen learner outcomes before. So we need to make sure that that is all connected to our um, overarching organizing idea, our guiding question. These are also the pieces that we're going to report on. So with Alberta Education's thinking right now, these would be the statements that would appear on the report card. You would be assigning grades or assessments accordingly in your whatever system you're using for marking to that learner outcome. But that would be the, uh, the statement that we would be using to address. And that's going to tell us the, the sort of specific area in my grade that I really need to zero in on from that broad concept at the top. How am I unpacking that specifically from my grade below? The CUSPs. As Ted mentioned, we have that new acronym and Alberta's not short on them, that's for sure. So knowledge, understanding, skills and processes. The knowledge is those pieces I need to be able to do. That's the factual pieces. It's the sometimes an algorithm. It's the, it's the concrete pieces, it's foundational. I can't, I can't go for deep understanding if I don't have foundational knowledge to start with and that's where it's going to start. When I look at skills and processes, it's the same thing. The skills and processes are telling me those dues, those um, enhancing and, and engaging components that I need to make sure that I have some factual knowledge. Now, how am I going to implement this? And what are some ways that I can engage my brain to show you that in the end, combined together, I'm able to meet what is called the understanding. So it's not a checklist. It's not, I do the knowledge, and then I do some skills and processes. And if I did both of those sides, I must have met the understanding. 
The understanding is that broad statement. It's very familiar to you when you read them. They're like our outcomes used to be phrased. So it combines both the knowledge and the understanding skills and process. Those are all one piece. They have to be worked in tandem and they take all of those concepts and tie them together. And this slide um, explains a little bit further um, what Chris was just talking about, how the pieces work together. Uh, they're not, they don't work in isolation. Um, you'll notice that the red words are highlighted um, in a way that reflect the key then, uh, the key ideas or key concepts with that part of the understanding. Um, so if you take a look at waste management and the knowledge part, it shows an example of what they are. The skills is to compare the impacts of waste management to help generate the understanding that waste materials should be managed properly based on their potential impact. So again, like Chris mentioned, they are in isolation, they work together and just like concepts, they, they're connected to each other to help build a broader understanding um, for those ideas. And you're probably gonna hear us say it a few more times, it's not a checklist, like don't. And we know some people really, really wanna go there. <laughs> um, as you go through the curriculum, you'll notice there's a, a few key words that, that pop up in, in the writing and Alberta education is, um, has let us know in that if you see the word include, such as in the example there, it means that um, whatever is followed, follows must be taught. And in the particular case of the example, uh, the components of the earth are land, water, air, plants, animals, and humans. And those are the things that must be covered. If you can go to the bottom um, example, if the illustrations are preluded by the word such as, those are examples. You can use any of them, all of them, uh, none of them, use your own examples, but we're looking at different representations and those are just some examples that are there for us to use. And finally, uh, in the middle example, what we have often is a word that is in, in parentheses. In this case, it's reflection. And the more appropriate scientific word is reflection. And you'll see that bouncing off the surface is really what it means. Alberta Ed does want us to want students to understand those words and use the words reflection, but in the discussion and in and the learning that goes around, they can be used interchangeably, but students should know that word in the parentheses. Um, now, besides the curriculum guide, there are also some progressions that I've talked about earlier in the introduction. Um, and the progressions are just age appropriate delineations of the different competencies, the different literacy skills, and the different numeracy skills that students at a particular age or grade level should be able to do by the end of the grade. So that's what the progressions will show us. Um, and um, when you when you get to them, it's it's a matter of having them um, in our understanding as we plan our activities. Um, when we plan in activities, we we'll want to keep in mind if we're going to do some reading and there's going to be some some aspect of literacy involved. There are some age appropriate literacy um, competencies that or progressions that the students should be aware of. Uh, same with numeracy, you wouldn't want to have a grade three student doing statistics necessarily. And so the numeracy progressions are there to help us understand we do include numeracy in our in our assignments or activities that it, they are age and grade appropriate, and along with the comp competencies as well. And uh, later on, Chris will take you through the Al New Alberta site that had those progressions so you can get a little bit clear picture of what they look like. You want to just unpack this one first and I'll go to the site? Yeah, we'll go to the site, I think. Okay. So you may have already been here to this site. You may have been there occasionally and aren't too sure whether or not you have everything that you should. So by that, I'm meaning there's, there was a Learn Alberta, there was a new Learn Alberta, and now there's what we call a new, new Learn Alberta. So you may not be familiar with the fact that it kind of bumped it up one more level. And the new Learn Alberta is actually called Curriculum Alberta. Doesn't matter. If you type in new Learn Alberta into your Google search, it will take you to the latest version, and that's where you want to be. 
The question is whether or not you have access to everything. So that's we we won't unpack this entire site for you tonight. There, we'll show you where you can, um, and we'll be glad to help you out individually if somebody has a question. But right now, we won't do that for this evening. So when we look at this site here, first of all, you see I'm not logged in yet, and, and I'm doing that for a reason. There's a couple of sites that if you have not been here that you should be aware of. One of them is this one here, which is the curriculum. And that's pretty much where you're gonna spend most of your time. It has all of our curriculum outcomes and documents in it that, that you want. But the curriculum implementation hub as well is an important one for you teachers. If you have not been to this site or you don't know how to navigate yourself around, Alberta did do a fantastic job of putting up short, videos on how to, where to, how to get to. So if you haven't been there, take a little bit of time, know where you wanna go and what you wanna find. And there's generally a video for you already that you can use for that as well. When you scroll down, this is what we call the generic page because any parent, student, anybody can get to this page, all right? You don't need any kind of special login. And you'll notice that there's a gaping hole right here. Now, when I log in, if I am completely up to date, I'm logged into all the levels that I should, then I shouldn't have a gaping hole in that particular area. And that's a, just a, a sneaky way that I use to have people check whether or not you're on the right track. So I'm in right now, and we learned this that you can have new Learn Alberta have your name come up and still not be logged in. So you won't see boards come up. If you see boards come up, then you are right where you need to be. So you don't need to worry about it. If you aren't seeing boards, but your name is showing up, you need to go back in, enter in your teaching certificate number one more time, and um, that will get you back to the level that you need to. And if you run into trouble anywhere along the way, they have these nice little help buttons on the bottom. Just, just click it on and just say, here's what I want to do. I, want, I haven't got access to it, and they'll help you out. You don't have to worry about it. Okay, so for now, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna spend time in here. So there's two places to get curriculum information. One is at the very top on your menu, and this is what you will see here. This will give me more specific breakdowns just for my grade and maybe one grade before or after if I choose to have that. If you're looking for that great big document that we looked at just previously, the numbered outcomes, this is where you'd find it without the numbers. So these are the big spreads where you see the progression going from kindergarten to grade two and then three, four and five, six. That's what you want here. We're gonna stay here just for a moment. And what we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna go into math first and then I'll go into science for, and I'll explain why in just a second. So I'm gonna take a math one. I'm just gonna grab any grade here. I'll grab grade one. So I have grade one and two, maybe I just teach grade one, maybe I wanna know what's happening in the next year or whatever. But anyway, what I wanna show you is here's your organizing idea as it appears right off the bat in the top, in this case, the first one, it's just number. But I want you to watch what happens when I take my mouse and scroll down, you'll see that my outcome that I hit turn green. And when it turns green, it tells you that there's a little bit more information specific to just that outcome, not your whole curriculum, just that one outcome that you selected. When I click it on, what I see on the bottom is knowledge, understanding skills and processes. So if I was forgetting what the cusps were, I can click that on and it will show that to me. But here's the pieces that we wanted to show you. The competency progressions that Ted was talking about, the literacy and the numeracy. They're already here for you. So when I click this on and I go below, they've already said on this outcome, students interpret and explain quantities to 100. That was your outcome. That outcome, they have already said, works well with the competency of critical thinking, problem solving, research and management, creativity and innovation and communication. So not all eight are there. And they explain to you what aspects of each one of those you might consider. Now you might consider, and I say might because you're not going to do all of those competencies with one outcome. Usually you pick one, you, maybe you pick two, and that will determine or be, de be dependent on what your concept is and how you're uh, planning to unpack that concept and what kinds of activities you might be doing with the students. So what are you going to be engaging them in for questions and, and what kinds of of um, conversations that they might have along the way. 
So that's how I could choose maybe one or two of these that I might want to use. I often say too that when you have the competencies listed and you say, I don't know, I've never even thought about what I might do. When you read these through, it might prompt your thinking, oh, like they're talking about research. So this might be a question that I could do or on an outcome that has research in it. So then I might have that research built in the back of my mind as I'm starting to do my planning, right? So use them as a prompt if it helps you out. Same thing with the literacy and the numeracy progressions. They've already identified based on this outcome, typically what a child would be doing in each of the divisions. They talk a little bit about what constructing meaning rules of language, uh, what those might be. So you're not having to second guess, what does that mean? You know, when Ted says, make sure that you include literacy and numeracy, like I don't know what that means. So here you can go and they've already done that work for you. When you go over here, you have resources. So in this case, they're giving suggested resources. And we want to make that really, really clear if you've not been to the site. These are only you can use if you wish. These are not must do. These are the only things that I'm allowed to use. The answer is no. These are if you want to try something here, feel free to. They're, they're not mandating it in any way, shape, or form. When we go to the science, unfortunately, right now, all of those pieces that I just showed you I'll just take you there. But what I've just showed you, and hopefully soon this will be not be the case anymore. You see that it lights up. You see that I can go in here to information. But when I go into these areas here, there is nothing below yet. So they haven't populated them yet. They are coming. They are completed. We just need to check. So just keep checking back and they will be posted eventually, as well as resources and things like that. So just want you to know how it works so that when they're finally there, you, you know what to do with them. Okay. Did you want to talk about boards? Um, only to the extent that there are there's a thing called boards, which is a planning tool that's also on that Learn Alberta site. And we're not going to get into that because we're not in the planning phase yet, but we will get to that at some point here, uh, maybe in the next um, next time we meet. And some of you are very familiar with boards, some of you aren't. And if you're not, don't panic, right? It's not a requirement. It, you, you, you got it. We'll, we'll learn it as we go. Don't worry. So the next document that we just want to talk to you about now that we kind of know the architecture and we know how the thing, uh, the outcomes were numbered within your document. The reason we numbered them again, just for ease of reference, ease of finding, also for planning purposes that you're not having to write everything out. The second document that we are going to provide you with is what we call the curriculum comparison document. So the numbering is, they're maintaining the same numbering that you had in that document. So it kind of follows through in that order. But now what we've done is we've said, here are those outcomes as we have seen them in your curriculum document. Here's all the ones for matter. This is your organizing idea and your guiding question. We've taken all of the outcomes and simply, whoops, and simply listed them here and they'll follow through. And I'll show you those in just a second. And then we look to see, is there anything in the curriculum that would have covered this previously? in another grade, whatever, just to make it a little bit easier for those of you who may have never taught science before, or you've never taught this grade before, or as a veteran teacher said to me last week, I've taught grade one for 22 years. I have no idea what they teach in grade two and three because I didn't ever have to teach grade two, which is a really good point. So what we did is we went through to find where there are some linkage linkages. Now, what we want you to clearly understand is what's listed in this column is not that the whole thing is covered here. It means that something in grade seven, for example, for the grade six new curriculum, there's aspects of the current grade seven program that might help you to start unpacking some of the pieces. There is no outcome in any one grade that fits the new outcome any one grade. There's always just snippets. And then there'll be some pieces that have nothing in here. And that just simply means that there was no link. It's brand new for you. And so um, we're gonna have to develop some of those pieces and get some good resources and make some linkages to the pieces that we have. So you will have this document. And again, I'll talk about this in just a little bit where you're gonna find all this stuff later. But this is how you'll see it unpacked. So we have our current learner outcome, 
We have where we found some relation to it. So you'll see I'm in grade six, it went to grade seven, it went to grade two, kind of all over the map of wherever we found it. There's a lot of blanks though, which means that there was nothing there that linked to your particular grade or that particular outcome because it was very new. So this is called the curriculum comparison document and we'll spend some time unpacking those in a bit at the end of the session. Right, and they're also helpful just think, so when you are on a, a certain um, component that wasn't in your uh, old curriculum, but it is now, and you'll see that, well, I can go maybe talk to the grade seven teacher just to help get some ideas to see what they've done um, to help move forward a little bit. It's, it's always nice talking to someone who's taught something similar to that. Um, every time we look at something new, um, in this case, the curriculum, we always we can look at it in a multitude of different ways. And the way we look at it is, is something that's often referred to as a conceptual lens. Um, I have a photo here, an image. And when you look at it, you could see a whole lot of different things. Um, but if I was to tell you to look at it and, and identify what would you see when you consider natural materials are in there, what would you see? Or if I change the focus, what would you see if I said, use the lens of process materials? Or maybe look at this photo through the lens of environmental impact. Or what if I use the concepts of what's the interaction between the lithosphere, hydrosphere, and the biosphere between land, water, and the organisms? Every time we look at it through a different lens, we see something different. Um, those are using science concepts, but again, just to just to clarify a little bit more, if we go to the next slide, what happens if we looked at those through art concepts, a focal point, perhaps light or symmetry? Once again, depending on our conceptual lens, we can see something different. We'll focus on something different. So when we're looking at the curriculum, what I want to do is just take a moment and say, let's look at the curriculum through the lens of concepts themselves. And you may have, we've, we've thrown the word around quite a bit, both Chris and I, and I'm sure you've heard that word being mulled over quite a bit, the word concepts. Um, we wanna make sure everybody understands what it is before we move on a little bit further. So a concept is simply just an organizing idea that has distinctive attributes that make it what it is. And there are many examples of those things that share that attributes. So if you take a look at the next slide, we'll see that a chair is a concept. The organizing idea that it's a chair, it's got two attributes, it's an object, and it's really designed for seating or for sitting. Um, and you'll see there are multiple examples that share those criteria of an object that's designed for sitting. So some of those other attributes, such as color and size and shape and fabric and material is not necessary. It's just that they have those two key attributes that make them what they are. And so further with our understanding of concepts, we know that they are also timeless. A chair is a chair is a chair. It was a chair in the last century and it is a chair in this century. It's universal across culture, across space. And usually one or two words will identify a concept. Um, and so, and you'll see that if you recall in the last example I had with the understandings that he had the term for waste management. Okay, so it's a, it's a, it's one idea of how we manage waste. It's one idea and we have different examples of waste management. And concepts themselves are organized, you can organize them from those broad general big ones and the more abstract ones at the top to the more specific uh, ideas or understandings at the bottom. Uh, so furniture is fairly broad, but we can narrow that down to chair and even further to dining chair. Next slide, please. Um, now, so given that understanding of concepts a little bit, I may want to pause and take a moment and say, take a look at this image and see what kind of concepts do you see here? And again, it's going to depend on what your, your conceptual lens is. Perhaps you see transportation. Perhaps you see urbanization. Perhaps you see uh, impact on the environment. There's relatively green space there. So when you look at that, and anytime we look at something, if you choose a conceptual lens, it's going to help focus on what you are looking at. 
So the conceptual lens, as Ted said, is something that we see through. We, we're, we choose what we're going to look at this whole um, piece that I wanna unpack for students. And what lens I'm choosing is gonna actually help define how I'm gonna put my unit together. And it doesn't have to be the same for two people. In fact, both of you could sit down and look at the same pictures of the chair and look at from two different directions or the, the one that you just looked at which had with the, with the traffic and all the different lanes on it. When we were working with teachers previously with concept base, one of the things that we looked at was um, PYP, which is an IB uh, version of for younger children, not for older children. Um, but really they have eight nice broad lenses that you can use and they fit very well to pretty much any topic you wanna look at or any concept that you wanna start unpacking. And so for example, even with what, uh, what Ted had shown me when he showed me the, the traffic, I was thinking more of form and function as to how does, that, how does that function with all those different layers of all the rows on there and how do we efficiently make all that traffic travel you know, with it that we don't have any accidents and whatever else. So these are other ways or other types of very general lenses that we can use to unpack specific concepts. And so why from an IB perspective? So sometimes you might even say, why even care about concepts and, and lenses at all? And it's research has shown that when children are brought right from an early age through looking at um, all the ideas that we're trying to teach them, the concepts that we're trying to bring forward, if they have a lens from which to focus that concept on, then their questions are much more targeted because now they know what they're unpacking. They know kind of where they're gonna zero in. If you're asking me about uh, the lens of design, the questions I might ask surrounding design might be very, very different than the questions I might ask about function. So how I put it together and how it works might be a completely different area that I might go to based on the lens that I'm gonna be looking through. So for example, some of you might know this um, as the walkout over um, Columbia ice fields. And some people said when we first showed it 10, there's no way in the world I'm going on that with a glass bottom on it. But you know, if you looked at that and you think about the terms that we just looked at here of responsibility, perspective, reflection, change, form, causation, connection, and function. Okay, now I built this thing and I'm out there. So again, as Ted mentioned, I can look at this from a lot of different ways. And if you're fearful, you're probably thinking more function, like how do they build this thing and how am I not gonna fall through the bottom of this? But the lens will change what you're looking for. So if I asked you to look at that picture and think of it through the term of function or design, as opposed to perspective, that might be a very different way of engaging um, my whole scenario within that, that piece there. So it, it does make you think reflectively on how you're going to unpack a concept. So having a bit of a lens is, is really a, a good thing to, to start thinking about and maybe getting students into the practice of. And it's okay to ask students to maybe identify what lens they would like to use to go through a particular concept, right? There are more than one way that I can meet my outcomes. Here's an example too. We talk about mammals and, and different hibernation patterns and different um, ways that they interact with their habitat. So this is just a typical kind of question that, or a story that students might read about bears. But now I might talk about how it's connected with their natural ecosystem of plants and animals. And what responsibility do we have as humans to ensure that their ecosystem is sustainable and that they are there for for a long time. So these again are the ways that we connect those concepts that, that uh, Ted was mentioning at the beginning, how we want to make sure that when we're talking about those cusps, it's not just a checklist of I did a bunch of thing and taught a bunch of facts. It's how are we connecting the concepts together all the way across the board. Here's another one. We talk about landforms, rivers and bodies of water in Alberta. Um, this could be a social studies. Uh, it, it connects well with the water and science, but, but it could also be with social studies. So students reflect on the function of people who settled in certain areas. Why did they settle there? What was the purpose of that? What, why was that a draw for them? And then what was the cause and effect that happened with humans 
who were stayed at the water, who moved away from the water, who had to move away from water because we populized it and we used it for different sources than what it was initially done, right? So there's lots of different ways for us to look at this. Or in this case, we're looking at chronological times and dates about government. So we have lots of, of history in all of our government uh, buildings, not only that, but in the government itself, its formation, its, its all of those pieces. So responsibility perspective, connections again, right? So it's really important that we unpack those and, and give students that opportunity to really think about what is it we're asking them when we're making those connections. And just to develop that a little bit further, um, what we've got in front of us here is uh, one of the outcomes. I forget which grade it's from. Um, I think it might be grade four, um, but the learning outcome is students investigate management of waste materials and describe potential personal and environmental impacts. Um, just for a little bit of a practice, I'm gonna, we're going to give you a few seconds to take a look at the outcome and the knowledge and understanding associated with um, that particular outcome and see if you could through use the lens or the, the con conceptual lens of concepts and see if you can pick out those concepts that are part of the knowledge, understanding and, and part of the learner outcome. Remember they're, 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 they're nouns, they're ideas, they're abstract ideas that have characteristics and they have examples that make them so. And if you want a little extra time, just pause the video right now. Just give yourself a few minutes so that you can go through and you can even just jot them down on a piece of paper. And so uh, if we look at the next slide, the, you'll see them lit up. Um, I highlighted some in red because those are the ones that show up in the learning outcome. Those are then the main ones. And you can see that throughout the understandings and throughout the knowledge, um, you'll see those in those uh, concepts pop up all the time so that gives you an idea when you look at 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 the outcomes and understanding say when i'm planning my activities and i'm going through this waste waste management and impact and environmental impact those are key ideas that students will need to understand as ideas by themselves and then when we look at the understandings and the knowledge further we'll see that we get an even more specific um, understanding with them. So waste materials can be solids or liquids or gases or new materials um, and natural materials are also concepts, um, but they can produce, again, the key idea, the key concepts of waste and management. So when you're going through these, take a look at the, take a look at the outcomes and, and try to see what those concepts are. And at the end of the day, when you look at the organ, organization of the, um, of the curriculum and take a look at all the concepts, then you can start making those connections and putting together in a concept map. This is for grade four science, uh, just the matter unit, but those are all the different concepts and ideas that show up in that one section on matter. And you can see that they're very connected between each other. And there are probably more lines you could draw in between them to show the different connections. And often if you could get kids to do this and to give them the, how are these ideas connected, if they can put them together, they're demonstrating that understanding part, uh, the center column uh, of those cusps, which is really how the different concepts um, are related. It's when kids can relate the different ideas that they create a deep understanding and a richer uh, understanding of the subject that they're taking. Okay. Um, what you're going to have available to you uh, fairly soon is something we're just calling a curriculum exploration tool. It's just a Google uh, sheet item. And what it's got, it, what it has is a breakdown of all the concepts for the most part um, and based on the understanding. So I'll show you that in a, in a second here. But, but we're, we you can do if you want to get your feet wet and just start mucking around in, in the curriculum and to see how comfortable you feel with the with the new curriculum and to see where maybe, maybe where your questions are or where your concerns lie. You may want to try using this little exploration tool. What will happen is you'll be given uh, um, the, uh, the outcome uh, or the cusp, and you can rate it as a level one, two, or three. A level one would mean that, hey, I got this. That's what I'm used to be doing. Um, I'm confident in doing this. Uh, level two would mean that, hey, I, you know what? I don't 
I'm not familiar with these concepts. I haven't taught them before, but I'm good. I, I, I've got, I know what I'm doing. I can go ahead with this. Uh, a level three would mean that um, it's the outcome is familiar with my current program, but it's always one that I have a little bit of trouble with. I don't really feel confident in the way it's being asked me, asked me to be taught this time around. So even though it's, I've dealt with it before, I don't feel quite confident with it. And a level four would concern would be, hey, I, I don't know, this is unfamiliar ground for me, and I don't feel comfortable or confident teaching this particular learning outcome. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see how that would be laid out, where they're all laid out under the, 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 the different cusps and learning outcomes. And I filled one out partially there. If you click a one, it turns green. And I may say that across the board, the area of confidence is in all the areas that are listed there. Um, I understand the content. I've got resources. I know how I'm going to instruct this. I got a good instructional approach ready to be used for this, and I know how I'm going to assess it. Or you may give yourself a different ranking depending on uh, your level of comfort once again. We're not going to ask you have to do this. Um, th there will be one available for each grade to help you go through the outcome piece piecemeal by piecemeal, and then record your thoughts. And not showing on this slide, but at the bottom, there's a place you could put some comments and some thoughts. Uh, and it'd be a nice, tidy way to keep all your ideas together so the next time we meet, you'll have a good place to, to access your questions uh, and, and, and a place to really keep your thoughts in one spot. It's there for you if you want. Uh, again, when we meet next time, we're gonna start looking at the planning. We're not going to do the whole curriculum. We're just going to break it down into um, the uh, the key ideas or the main ideas of each unit, each organizing idea. And there are various ways that people like planning. Um, we will take a quick look at the New Alberta website and how you can use the board uh, to plan your activities and your units. Um, and we'll look at some other planning tools. We'll share one for you, one with you that's again based on just a spreadsheet, but has lots of drop down menus with all the cusps and outcomes uh, easy to, to gather together in one spot. It'll allow you to pick up the different concepts. They'll be all in drop down menus. And another thing we haven't really talked about are the skills as much as we we will do that as we move along in the next few sessions. But we know that there's the skills and procedures and embedded in there are different skills, um, such as compare and contrast or discuss. And so we'll want to pull those out as well and draw some attention to those. So that's when our kids are asked to compare and contrast, they know exactly uh, what it does mean to compare and contrast or where the attributes of a good discussion or a person who discusses. We'll also have in the planning uh, uh, tools, ways to record and gather resources, whether they be digital or print or whatever. Uh, and then look at some assessments and suggested transfer activities. So we can move those understandings, that middle part of the cusps from beyond what's just there to a new context to help kids demonstrate that they really understand those ideas and how they're connected together. So that's a lot um, that you're got coming your way. And we said, we're going to learn with us. Um, we've had to sort of pull things together really quickly here because we weren't anticipating so many people doing science. So um, we are really absolutely wanting you to be as engaged with this as possible. You're sure not going to hurt our feelings if you jump in and say, hey, you know, I used to do this and it's a great idea. And yeah, you want to share that with your colleagues for sure. So just what happens next, this is your first session one. And after this, everything becomes specific to your grade by date. And you will also have received Zoom links in your registration. So you've received, you will have received two confirmations. The first one is just the registration in order for you even just to get logged in or get registered for the program. The second one was that you got a login to get into the site. And it will always be available to you. You can log in from home. You don't have to be at school. You just always have to have your school log in to get in to that particular cohort site and into your grade. So we will be unpacking one numbered um, organizing idea per session. 
And so we did ask teachers, we have done some previous sessions already, and we asked for feedback, and they were great. They said, you know, if you could start with living systems, that would be great. And so that will be our first organizing idea. And you will see that in the confirmation that you received with your Zoom links, you see the, the date of your session and the title of which organizing idea we're going to do. So if you had one that you filled out the form and said, I'm good, I got I got this by the tail, I don't need to go to any more sessions, then don't, that's fine. You always will have access to go into session two and have a look at it and see what we did. But don't feel if you've got that one well covered that you, you need to spend time with us just because, all right? Um, so we'll look at one organizing idea. We're going to look at whatever comes available under that as well. So here's what we would really like you to have. Each time you come to the session, we would like you to have copied out or printed out your um, numbered outcomes document. And so in the session one folder that you're in right now to watch this video, you will have noticed above it was the numbered outcomes and the curriculum documents. So download those ones specific for your grade that you're teaching and have the numbered outcomes document, maybe a highlighter. So that activity that, that uh, Ted had you do where he just said, go through and highlight that, what you think are the concepts. What are you seeing that's coming apart in this, in this particular organizing idea? We're gonna ask you to do that each time. Um, if you did it ahead of time, that's fine, just bring it along. But we really wanna just give you a chance to always find those concepts by yourself and then have a little bit of verification when you come back that, um, you know, yeah, I got most of everything that they highlighted too. So I, I think I'm well underway because for some of you, that might be very new to you. You're not used to highlighting concepts or finding them, right? So the other thing that we will have in each of the sessions is that beautiful concept map that you saw for matter. We're going to do one for each of the organizing ideas for your grade so that again, because each of you might look at all of the things that you're unpacking through a different lens having the web or the map there is a starting point for you and then depending on which lens you want to unpack it for the students will depend how you start to plan your unit so it's impossible for us to simply say here's all the lessons um here you go like that's just not going to work because all of you are going to see this a little bit differently or just teach it very differently so what we will do though is we will source out resources we will look for books that you might use if you don't already have them. If you have some and they work really well, bring them to the session so that we can add those to, to the information. Um, things like what you see in the background here, I've already got a bunch of books purchased for the different grades that I think would work really well. So we'll have suggestions. We also have links to sites that you'll be able to use. So hopefully we can do a little bit, save you a little bit of legwork in trying to source out the resource part of it what you need to have sort of thinking up front is how am I going to unpack this? And then we can start to pull in those resources that we share with you. If you have resources and you're willing to share them, please send them to me and I will have them posted into our folder just for your grade. They won't go anywhere else. We'll leave them in there so that your colleagues that are in this cohort would also be able to use them. So again, if you're willing to share and willing to, to send them to us, by all means, we will put them there. Don't hesitate to connect with either Ted or I at any point in time. Um, you will have our contact information at the end and uh, you don't have to wait for a session to ask a question. Like if there's something that you, you know, especially if you're doing something to go, I wanna do it from this lens, I got this concept running through my mind and I don't already know where to go with it or I don't have any resources. If we do have something in our back pocket that we didn't put in your folder, Believe me, we will go look for it and, and share it with you. If we don't, then at least we can try between the three of us to, to save you a little bit of work and we'll do some searching out. It won't be perfect because we don't have the resources listed. We don't know what the government is actually focused on for resources, but we also wanna say that you do have a lot of resources, albeit, I will honestly say, albeit that all of us were just waiting for the 1996 curriculum to go, so we got some new resources because this is driving us crazy that it's so old. But conceptually, the topics that are in there are still really good topics, right? So we don't want to throw those concepts away. We just do want to unpack it in a more timely world-like fashion that we're living in right now as opposed to 1996, which things have changed. And so you have our contact information there. Please feel free to connect with us at any time.
Remember, That's you great. can go in and out as many times as you want. You are not restricted and it's not going to go down once the sessions are over. So this will stay up permanently. Okay, so hopefully we've been able to at least give you a good start um, and give you a sense of what you're going to be expecting. And then the next time we see you will be at your first session number two, whenever that is going to be based on the date and the Zoom link that you have. So thanks very much, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thanks, everyone.